Okay, so let's move to the procedure part. Roll call. Chairs do roll call before the conference starts. After every break during the conference that allows the delegate to leave the room or mingle in the room, you have to do a roll call. Roll call is usually done in alphabetical order. Opening speech. You have to let every delegate give a speech regarding their policy and position on certain topics. The delegates will take the floor on the podium to speak. Make sure you keep time limit of one minute and give them a 10 second warning before the time ends. After every three speeches, the room has section called rights of reply. You have to keep track of how many speeches have been already done and say, now you will have the rights of reply. Are there any delegates in the room? At this time, they do not take the floor, but just stand up and speak about what they think and like others' policy and positions. Leave a sign regarding how willing he or she is lobbying. For lobbying, you will set very strict time length. During lobbying sections, you have to lead the delegate into different sections based on their different topics and different positions and the number of the group. Keep the number almost the same for each group so that an equal amount of participation is ensured. When necessary, you need to force them into desired groupings. Chairs notify the delegate that they had to assign one main submitter and one co-submitter. Lastly and importantly, the goal of lobbying is to merge the resolution done by many, many delegates to one final best resolution. And the complete version of the resolution is supposed to be handed in to approval panel to check for the wordings and the format at least 30 minutes before the lobbying ends. Open debate and closed debate. Simon procedure allows the chair to set time limit for each debate mode according to the big timetable. During open debate, chairs will call on delegates whoever are for or against the resolution to take the floor, resulting in debating back and forth regarding one resolution. During closed debate, Please be mindful that in this section, you should divide the time equally from debate for and against the particular resolution, respectively. Chairs should call upon any delegate speaking for this resolution to speak first, then those who are against. Amendment is supposed to be made. Chairs will first pass out the amendment sheet to the use and notify the delegate that Amendment sheet will be accepted. Amendment is the proper adjustment to the resolution, and during the debate of the amendment, chairs should set time limit. At the end of it, the voting procedure without abstention, abstention votes is proceeding. If the amendment is passed, the chairs will notify the delegate the proper adjustment to the resolution. Eventually, at the end of the debate, one resolution. Voting procedure contains abstention votes. Speaking of voting procedure, a resolution will pass if the number for this resolution exceeds the number against this resolution, regardless of the number of abstentions. Okay, this is pretty much about a procedure. Let's focus on some small bugs that you might want to avoid. Every time delegate walk away the floor without saying the delegate of whatever, use the floor back to the chair or to the other designated delegate. It's out of the order. There's completely no direct conversation between delegates. All delegates need to talk to each other through asking chairs. For example, if delegate A could not understand what delegate B is saying, he or she would need to speak to the chair by would the chair please ask a delegate A to rephrase? The one important thing is you should correct the delegate if they use I, you, or we stuff. All speeches delivered by a delegate should be in third person. Bear in mind some ways whereby the delegate make direct contact with you. The most common ways that the delegate communicate with the chairs are points. Basically, there are three points. 
points of information, points of order, and points of personal privilege. Point of information is the point delegate uses to raise a question about other delegates' points or other chair's instruction. Point of yes. order. If the delegate take issue with the procedure of the conference or certain matter of sensibility, they can raise point of order. Point of order can be used to examine and remind chairs the proper order of events occur during the conference. And the chairs, we have to be very polite in accepting the friendly reminder. Point of personal privilege. This is the only point that can interrupt the speakers. It's usually addressed when delegates have issue with the audibility, meaning they cannot hear what other delegates are speaking. At this point, they can say, point of a personal privilege. And then when granted, they will say audibility to remind the chairs to have the delegate on the floor speaking, speak up. Otherwise, point of order is not accepted. It's denied. Please notice this. The chairs will have the right to deny any points above the, for righteous reasons. Okay, this video is meant to give you some major ideas about how the conference goes. But this does not include all the information and situations you might encounter and you might need during the day. Please do study more and I hope this video will become a good tool for you. If anything blurs your understanding about what I just included, and you cannot find it in your research, please ask me in person or write me an email through 17ALONCPACHINA.org. Thank you very much.